Hey folks, and uh, welcome back. In this fifth and final video of our lightning series, we're gonna use the basic lightning particle system we set up in part two. Uh, to get to this final result, we're gonna need a custom shader that can take all of our pack channels uh, and do interesting things with them. And we're gonna to need to drive some of our shader attributes with our particle system. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in. So this is as far as we had taken the particle lightning system in Unity at the end of part two. Now I'm going to go and grab my texture atlas that I just created. Here is our texture atlas. So, and I'm just gonna drag and drop that into my textures folder just here. So this is the texture atlas we had previously where you can see the uh, lightning was quite thick at the ends. Previously, we had used the default sprite shader within Unity. This time, we're going to go and create our own custom shader. I'm just going to check out the different channels in my texture first. So there's my red channel, which we're going to use as our animation mask. Uh, our green and blue channel, we'll get something for emission out of those. And then our overall alpha. I'm going to assume that you guys are a bit more familiar with Unity than you are with Houdini, so I'm going to try and go through the Unity side of things a little bit faster. We are in the Universal Render Pipeline and we're going to use Shader Graph to create a lit shader graph at least to start off with. And I will go and create a material from this so it will be hooked up already. I'd like to name them with the same name but with a different suffix. I'm going to go and apply that onto my particle system. So under Renderer here, I'm just going to hook up my new material. And I'm gonna open up my shader graph. So the first thing to do is to bring in our tiled and packed atlas. So I need a sample texture 2D node. And I can go and point that to my texture that we created. To get access to the channels that we packed, we need to use the split node. And on the split node, we're going to be able to take an RGBA as an input, and then we can split out for the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha channel. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook up one of the uh, emission channels. I'm just gonna hook it straight into the base color. And now we can see the emission being pumped onto our particle within our particle system. So what I would like to do is take information from my particle system here and pump it into my shader and drive attributes of my shader with numbers from my particle system. And that will make it much easier to control the overall animation. I'll just have to adjust the particle system. It will adjust the timing in the particle system and adjust the timing for the shader as well at the same time. So to get information from my particle system into my shaders, I can do so under the renderer module here. There's an option called custom vertex streams. So we can turn that on and you can see we get a couple of different default custom vertex streams. And one of these is a color vertex stream just here. So color information from my particle system can get passed into my shader. So we need to turn on some color information within our particle system. So let's add a color over lifetime module just here. And I'm going to add a gradient. Now I've created some gradients previously. Uh, so I'm just gonna add this gradient here. So now I have color happening on my particle system but we can't actually see it through our shader just yet. So to call the color information in particular into our shader, we can use a vertex node. So we can put down a vertex color node just here like this. And with this vertex color, we can plug it directly into a mission for now. And we can click save here. And now we can see the color changing over the lifetime of the module. Okay, so that information is being pulled in from our particle system and it is coloring our shader. So that's how custom vertex streams work. Now, sometimes they're not as straightforward to get into your shader as, as with color, but the basic idea is that we can take numbers and values within our particle system and pump them into our shader. Now, I want to be able to control the color over lifetime strength. So I'm just going to plug this into a multiply and we'll create a float value to control the strength of it. Plug this into my multiply just here, plug that into a mission, and we can create a float here, which we'll call uh, call over life. And we'll default this to one. And we can hook that guy up. And we can save our shader. If I open up my shader here, I can see that 
I can set this to zero now and I get no color over lifetime. And if I set it to one, I get color over the lifetime of the particle. That's our first custom uh, vertex stream setup. The next thing I want to take a look at doing is controlling the alpha. I want to use the red channel, uh, which is where our animation mask is, to control the alpha animation so that we get lightning growing over the lifetime of the particle. So if the particle lasts for five seconds, I want the animation growth to be over five seconds and to go from the root all the way down to the tips. So again, we could go and animate this using a, a time and maybe a sign inside in our shader graph, but I actually want to control it from the particle system because if I don't control it from the particle system, the timing of the shader and the timing of the particle systems will be out of sync. So in this case, I need a number for the, the age of the particle. So these are the default uh, custom vertex streams that I get. If I click this little plus, I get a list of all of the other ones. Over on the Unity docs, we can find information about particle uh, vertex streams. And here's a list of all of the different particles. I can link this in the description so you can go through them at your own time. But you can do things like you can take UV information for each particle stream animation frame blending but the one we're looking for is this one here age percent so this is the normalized age of each particle from zero to one this is the the bit that i care about this is a number that's going to count from zero to one over the length of the particle's lifetime and so that's what i want i want to be able to control the animation growth from zero the root of the lightning to the very tips one over the lifetime of each particle. So, so this is exactly the guy I'm looking for. So on our particle system here, I can go down to my list and under lifetime, I will find age percent. So now I'm outputting this number that's counting from zero to one over the five seconds that the particle lives. Now calling the particle system uh, vertex streams um, can be quite specific and a little bit archaic. So it takes a small bit of getting used to. In this particular case, age percent, we can see it's a texture coordinate and it says dot z here okay and we need to keep in mind that these are just numbers so xyz rgb uvw they're all vector trees so they're all basically just numbers with three components to them and in this case we're interested in the z component so we're interested in the third component and it is given out as a texture coordinate so that means that we when we plug it into our shader here we need to use a uv node and this isn't necessarily obvious the first time you try and do it and you have to read through the docs a little bit to figure it out but now i can pull in information through the uvs because it's a texture coordinate now the default uv channel is uv0 i will need to increase this to uv1 and that will allow me to pull in this extra information that's been pushed out through one of the texture coordinates I'm interested in the Z component, so I need to use a split here again. So we can go out from our UV into our split and the component I'm interested in is Z. So X, Y, Z, R, G, B. So this is the one that I'm after here, B. So this will get me a number between zero and one. Now I want this uh, zero to one number to affect my animation mask, okay? My animation mask is in my red channel. So I'm just going to make a little bit of space here. And we can go and grab our red channel here. So I have a number that counts from 0 to 1. And I have a black and white mask. And what I want to do is affect one with the other. So I'm going to end up using a subtract node to, subtra so to subtract from 0 to 1. And that's just to get my animation mask to grow. So if I take my red channel here and I plug it into the first input from my subtract. I'll go from the out of the subtract into my alpha. Now, when I come to check for an alpha option here on my fragment shader, there isn't one. And that's because currently Unity is seeing this particle as opaque. So I need to go and tell it to change my surface to be transparent. So I have to select my fragment block here open up the graph inspector and on the graph settings here i can scroll down and i can change it from opaque over to transparent and when i do that i get an alpha option here so now i'm going to take my subtract node and i'm going to plug that into the alpha and we can just hit save here and we'll see what happens and there we go we now have something happening we have a particle that's been born and it is fading away i'm going to turn off my skybox here just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. 
And yes, we have something happening where our lightning is firing and it is fading away over the five seconds. Now, it is fading in the wrong direction. So you can see it is fading from the tips up to the root. So what I need to do to reverse that is to put a one minus node in here just after the split to invert the number. So instead of it counting from zero to one, it counts from one to zero. So I'll just put my one minus node in between these two and I can save that. And let's go and look at our lightning particle system once more. And yes, there is our animation growing. It is growing from the root down to the tip. So that is starting to come together for us. But you can see that it's still quite faded. So just in between the subtract and the alpha, I'm just going to multiply our alpha just so it gets brighter overall. Uh, so I can just put down a multiply node here and I'll multiply it by a value. This is a bit of a blunt way to do this, but it will work for now. So I'll hook up my subtract to here, this to the alpha, and I'll create a float, which I'll call, uh, we'll call it alpha strength. We can drag that out of the blackboard. Uh, we'll put the default value to be maybe five, and we can just hit save. And now we can see that we have some lightning growing from the root down to the tip and it feels a bit brighter and stronger overall. So our tiled atlas is working. We're getting 16 different types of lightning. We've got some animation working now where it is growing down the length of the lightning. We can try adjusting some of the timing and, adjust, uh, and adjusting our emission and our pulse process volume to do a little bit of look dev on the lightning. So I'm going to increase the speed of our lightning here we'll decrease it down to two seconds for now just so it's still easy to see we can look at the value going from our green channel into our base color here we can multiply that by a color so that we can start to get more of a glow and then we can play around with our pulse process volume as well uh, so let's put in a multiply here and we can put down a color node which i will set to be hdr and we can put it just to be a blue for now and we can hook this guy up and we can take our green channel and we'll multiply that by the HDR color and put that into base. I'm going to convert this into a property and we'll rename it to base color. Okay, let's save that out and we can start to increase the base color a little bit. Now I want to control the overall glow really with my emission, but let's just try it out for now. And now we're starting to get some lightning that's growing and glowing. I want to have better commit control over my emission, so let's go and look at our emission here. At the moment really we're just taking color of our lifetime uh, for our emission. And I'd like to be able to use one of my maps to control emission let's try taking our blue channel here and multiplying it by our color over lifetime and plugging that into a mission now i need to make a little bit more space and clean up so i'll come back to you in just one second after i've cleaned up the graph uh, i want to take my emission map and blend it with the color over lifetime setup i've got so let's put down a blend node here i'll just fold up the preview and we'll plug the color over lifetime into the first blend uh, I'm going to have the blue channel here go into the second blend. So my texture map is going into the second blend and I want to control that with a float. So when it's on zero, it will be completely color over lifetime. And when it goes and when we put it to one, it will completely go to the map. So let's put down a float here. And we can call it glow blend. And I'm just going to put in one to map just to give some instruction to the artists. And we'll put this here and hook it up. Now, I'd also like to be able to control the glow of the map color. Uh, so let's put down a color here and we'll call it. We can set it to be HDR and we'll give it a default color of, of a bright pink and put it up to two, maybe or three. And we'll multiply that by the map that's already there coming in. 
because our map of course is just black and white it's been pushed into the blue channel and let's take that and put it into option number two now there's various different blending modes we could use on our blend node but i'm going to keep it pretty simple here i'm just going to use multiply i'm going to turn this to a slider and we'll say the default can be zero so it, when it's on zero it will take all color of our lifetime and when it's on one it will take all uh, emission plug that into emission here and let's save this asset i'm going to lower the base color just a little bit here just so i can see what's happening with just the emission uh, at the moment i'm expecting ah, okay so this is also defaulting to zero so let's dial this up quite a lot let's put it up to five maybe so when it's on glow blend uh, when it's on zero we're getting color over lifetime as I move this slider over to the right, I'm getting more and more of this emission map color. Now we're starting to see the pinkish glow coming through. So let's go and adjust our timing overall and try speeding up our lightning just a little bit, just to get a feel for the impact. So my duration is a little bit long here. I'm gonna put my duration down to two seconds. Each piece of lightning lasts one second long and then a second later, the, the cycle begins again. And we shoot another one. So my lightning is starting to come together a good bit more now. It's starting to feel like it's got more impact. We can also try dialing up the base color now just a little bit. So that's got our emission working. So as we dial this down, we're getting more color over lifetime. Now it's not very bright at the moment, but we did put in a color over lifetime strength just here. We're taking this vertex color and multiplying it by this number. So let's try putting this up to maybe, I don't know, seven or something like that. And now we're starting to get the color of our lifetime coming through. Uh, let's try putting it up to 10 just to over crank it for now. Yeah, so now that's starting to come through there. We can test that out, of course, by choosing different colors. Is this one, so it's going to go towards blue over its lifetime and you can start to see the blue glow come through there. So that is also starting to work. So now we can go from blue color of our lifetime to this kind of pinky color over lifetime. So that's starting to work for us now. The uh, mission is a little bit too strong everywhere. I'd still like to have more control over that. Uh, I feel like the lightning itself is a little bit too stylized and could do with some more longer tendrils. I like the bigger shapes. I'd like the emission map to have a little bit more detail in it so that I get more of a pulsing feel. So it's not glowing everywhere. It just glows in parts down along the length. So those are all things that are controlled by the texture maps. I would need to go back over to the Houdini site and refine the setup a little bit over there, a little bit more over there. But the whole system is starting to come together quite well now. So I should be able to iterate over and back as much as I like to get the control that I want. So instead of building out the whole system on the Houdini site, I think we'll do an overview of it um, just to move this towards its conclusion. Uh, so here we are back on the Houdini side. And I just wanted to show you the uh, final texture that we end up with. With Houdini, you can build in quite a lot of flexibility. We've covered all of the basics that you would need for doing this type of effect. And I think really at this point, it should be up to you to get more and more specific as to the look that you want. I will give you a very brief highlight of what I did to take the lightning from where it was at to here. So here we are back over in SOPS. And really, this is what we had previously. So we can control the amount of noise on our line. And all I did was I duplicated the line two more times. So here's the original curve, and if I just get rid of these for one second, I'm just doing a bend on that original curve, so that one makes it longer and thinner, and this one kind of bends it over to the left, and I merge them all together. So now we've got three versions of the same piece of lightning. Then I use a time shift, and the time shift is just going to grab, in this case, the next frame. So the time shift by default is set to $F, which is the current frame number, and I just added a plus one. So now we're on frame 12. This guy here is going to go and add frame 13. So now it's bending frame 13, just so that they don't all look the same. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to use a time shift and I'm going to grab a different frame. So in this case, I'm grabbing the current frame number, which is um, frame 12 plus 6, so frame 18. And it just grabs me another different looking piece of lightning. And we merge all of those together. And it's really just to get different looks. If I want to, I can come through here and I can just scroll with this guy and pick other frames. Okay, and that's really all that I did there. That's making it just a little bit longer and uh, uh, giving it a bit more shape, I guess. I'll jump into my camera and 
uh, just coming down here. All that this bend is doing here is um, allowing me to rotate my lightning around. I could use a transform here as well. I'm just keying on every frame. So I'm not doing anything clever procedurally or using clever expressions or anything like this. All that I'm doing is keying every single frame across my 16 frames. And then I can come along here to, let's say, frame seven and I can go, oh, let's let's twist this around a bit. Uh, let's just art direct it a little bit. And OK, we'll we'll choose uh, we'll choose this shape here and then we can jump onto the next frame and kind of go, OK, well, is that what we want? Maybe we want something a little bit more like this, a little bit more bendy and flowy. Next frame, etc., etc., etc. This is uh, baked in, so there's keys here. Uh, it means if I change the seed, I would probably have to go and change all of these, uh, and that's fine. Right, we're coming towards the end of the project. We don't need it to be procedural the whole way through. Uh, in the end, we need to be able to art direct this thing and get different shapes. So that's all that's happening there, and that's it, really. That's getting me the longer, more tenderly type shapes that I wanted. I render them out as flipbook sequences and then over in cops. Wanted to get a little bit more control over my emission. So I just added a few extra little nodes inside in cops. So I'm taking my red channel here uh, because it's faded off at the end and I want the emission to be stronger at the tips than at the ends. I'm trying to pick up the edges here with an edge node because I want it to be hotter at the edges. I blur off the edges just a little bit. Uh, I can blur off the original just a little bit as well and overlay them. I can take my original blue channel here, which had some interesting information in it, over one over the, uh, put one over the other. I'm just taking some noise here and I'm plugging it into the mask. The mask here affects the first input, so the blurry emission needs to go into the first input here. And then my other information is going into the second one. And keep in mind, this is getting pumped into one channel. Uh, so we can go and take a look at, for example, the blue channel. So that's what it actually looks like. Okay, so I'll get more emission in some places than in others. So it's just a more interesting emission map than what we had previously. I can put that all back together into my channel copy here. So just to take a look, this is my uh, final texture now. Here's the red one, my animation mask. Here's the green one. We could probably plug that into the base color if we like. Here's my more interesting emission map. And there's my original alpha. Tile the whole thing with this mosaic node. Uh, I can output it and just making sure that it is not pre-multiplied and we can bring this back over into Unity. Here we are back in the Unity side. I've brought in the texture atlas. So I'm gonna call that into my shader. So let's call that one into the shader here. And I need to save my shader to update it. And here we go. We've got more tendril-like lightning now on the Unity side. Uh, so I can spend a little bit of time getting the emission to do what I want. And then we can take a look at just some final scene presentation. So the emission at the moment is still pretty strong and a little bit blunt overall. What I'd like to get is a pulsating uh, emission that runs down the length of the lightning. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, in this case is I'm going to take my sample texture 2D here. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to want to move this down along the length of the lightning, so I'm going to need a tiling and offset. Tiling and offset is going to need a time node to get it to move, so I'll put down a time node here. Now, time is usually very fast, so we will put down a multiply, and we can multiply time by just a small value. I'll turn this into a float in just a minute, uh, just to be able to control it from the inspector, and I'll put that into my offset just here. And I can plug my tiling and offset into my UV for my lightning. Now, I could go and use a, a different texture. I could go and paint uh, a texture or something like that for my glow. But what I'm going to do in this case is just reuse the texture that the texture atlas that we had previously. So now we're going to have a version of our lightning uh, that's going to be moving. And at the moment, it's going to be moving kind of downward left. And if I want to, I can build in some extra controls here uh, to control the movement. But really, I just need something that's going to kind of move from the top to the bottom. Now I'm gonna take my uh, moving texture here and I'm gonna multiply it just into where the uh, mission map is coming in, which is just here. So I'll put down a multiply and I will hook up my moving texture here. And this is my emission map. So that I should only get this moving texture happening through that blurry emission map that we just created. And I need to plug that into the blend. I probably need to soften off the overall amount of emission in the scene anyway, but I should get kind of a pulsing thing moving down through my shader. Let's save that out. Uh, so with the lightning 
particle system selected here, we can see that the emission is now much more controlled, right? It's not happening everywhere, it's just sort of pulsing down through the lightning, which is what I wanted. So the initial is much more subtle and specific. Now we're seeing a little bit too much of the original base texture here. The lightning itself needs to glow as well. So we can go back to our shader here and we could increase the base color. We could start dialing up the HDR just here on the base color. Yeah, so that's coming up now. So now we've got this kind of white center that we can control and we have this emission pulse that's shooting down through our lightning overall. So we also have this value for controlling our blend from our map back over to our color over lifetime. So if we want to, we can start dialing back over towards that. That will make the map irrelevant and we will get this color over lifetime kicking in now. So let's go and change the color for that. Just so you can see that that's changing over the lifetime of the lightning strike. Uh, so and we can balance anywhere in between. So I've got very good control over my emission now, which is going to be very important in terms of defining the final look and defining that kind of impact and the kind of energy running through the lightning overall. Now we could build a lot more complexity into our shader to get more control over that, but that really is the, the basic system setup and what we set out to achieve at the start of these lessons. Uh, this would be good enough, I think, to show to an effects lead at this point and say that you have good control over it. And of course you'll get feedback and you'll have to iterate uh, over and back between Houdini and Unity to address those notes. I think if you wanted to show it to uh, an art lead or a game director, you're going to need to do maybe just a small little bit of set dressing. I'm going to go and add a, uh, a skybox just to give it a bit more atmosphere and maybe do a small bit more post-processing. So to change our skybox, I'm just going to go to bring up my lighting uh, settings. And over an environment here, uh, I can change the skybox. Uh, I've gone and downloaded some free skyboxes. Uh, Fantasy skybox, I think is what they're called. I'll put a link in the video uh, description. So I just need to turn back on my skybox. There we go. And now I can go and pick through these uh, in terms of the ones that I would like. I'm going to pick one of these darker ones just to show the lightning a bit clearer. Maybe this one here is good. I'm just going to jump back over to my post process volume here and let's see what else we can add to uh, affect the look. Now we can already control the overall threshold and the uh, intensity for our emission. So we could start dialing these up maybe just a little bit. And I could dial the threshold up a little bit as well. Um, the other thing maybe I could do here is I can go and add a... I can go and do some tone mapping to my overall scene, which will give us a little bit of crunch for our blacks and for our whites, make it feel slightly more cinematic. Uh, we can go and add a vignette just to darken off the edges a little bit more and make it feel a little bit more like nighttime. Uh, and I can also go and add maybe a texture over the top. Okay, now in this case, I want it to feel kind of rainy and stormy. I've gone and downloaded an image from uh, the net. We can just try and load that guy in. So it drops condensation here and we'll need to turn up the intensity of this. Now this should only show up really in the brightest areas. So yeah, so that's starting to, to work quite well there. Now it's, it's adding more bloom to everything, but you're starting to only pick up the drops of water on the window through the lightning itself. One last fairly straightforward thing we can do to improve the look is to add a lights module onto our particle system here now we need a light to add in here and this light will get added every time the lightning fires so we're going to use a point light i'm going to turn it off i don't want it to appear in the scene back on my lightning particle system here i can add my point light so the light has been added to our particle system the ratio controls the probability of the light being fired and at the moment it's zero so let's just change this to one so now for every particle strike, a light will be fired. So we can just see it just at the base of the lightning strike. Yeah, you can just see it coming in there. Now, sometimes you'll have to increase the range multiplier and maybe the intensity multiplier a little bit. And you might need to move the particle system around or move the ground around because sometimes the lights can appear underneath. So now we're getting some ground interaction and some lighting interaction with the objects on the ground, which helps to settle the whole effect. And now we're starting to get towards uh, something that we could show maybe to uh, to one of our art leads or supervisors uh, in terms of, you know, something a little bit more atmospheric. There's still plenty to do in terms of the timing of this thing. It's going way too slow. Um, there's still plenty to do in terms of controlling the emission maybe a little bit more. So it's starting to get to a point really where we need to get a good bit of feedback on it and get context on 
where it's going to fit within our larger game design and so that we can take it really towards towards final so i hope you've enjoyed this lightning series um just to kind of let you know a secret i guess right at the end the series re really isn't about lightning in the strictest sense it was really trying to be an applied introduction to using houdini with unity to build out more art directable and controlled effects Along the way, I wanted to introduce some more advanced concepts such as Atlas tiling, which is going to be very important for building out more complex effects, and the idea of channel packing, which is going to allow us to bring in a lot more information, which in the end is going to give us more control over our effects. Um, we looked at the idea of creating particle systems and building our own custom shaders. We looked at the idea of taking information from our particle system and pumping that into our shader using custom vertex streams. So all of those concepts are very powerful ideas. They're, they're not specific to creating lightning effects at all. They're really fundamental concepts for getting high quality art directable real time effects. And maybe just to leave on one last thing, now that we've uh, we've put in the time and effort to get all the way here, uh, we can go to our start lifetime here and let's put it to random between two constants and we'll do 0 0.4 to maybe 0 0.7 or something like that and let's start lowering our duration down. So I'm going to put it down to 0 0.5 to begin with and if I do that I get lots and lots of strikes. But just to finish out on a high, if you put this all the way down to 0, you'll get a lightning party. If you've managed to make it all the way through, we can we can celebrate with our little lightning party right here at the end. And maybe this is what you should possibly send through to your dailies or your feedback session uh, to start off with. See what kind of feedback you can get from there. So I'd just like to say thank you for your time if you met it all the way through and I hope you found it worthwhile. And I'll see you in the next videos.